The country here seems immune to the ravages of time and man. The thin gums that line the road hang on to orange soil, desperate for rain, looking like it might never come. These foothills are what's left of bits of the plateau that have eroded away. There may have been waterfalls where we're driving now once, but all that is left of those days are the ever watchful crocodiles. It's interesting when you think about them, how they've lived so long without humans. They must not be surprised by much. To them, we are just new prey, a little harder to catch than some. Ahead of us is true croc country, the broad alluvial plains of Kakadu, where we can finally wet a line, where the country changes in almost every single respect. This is yellow waters in the heart of the park. This verdant zone is comprised of shallow creeks and marshy bogs. Rob Johnson runs fishing tours on yellow waters and he offered to take me out in his boat with the promise of a barra. There are a million great reasons to come to Kakadu National Park and no place I think shines in the park like Yellow Waters. This place really is the jewel. The way the sun hits the water here, the giant lilies, the wildlife, particularly the salties. But I think more than anything, what brings a lot of people here is the fishing. And Rob, you're a god for Yellow Waters fishing. That's true. You're gonna show us some secret spots, mate. I'll try to do my best anyway, yeah. Now the waters here are incredibly rich. I think, you know, people talk about how good the fishing was here 20 years ago but it's still that good. Oh, it is. I, I first came through in um, 2000 and, and the fishing now is just as good as it was then. And there's not too many places you can say that about. Rob, what is it do you think about this area that makes it so full of life every year? Oh, I think the management's the key. Um, it's very well looked after by the rangers and your local traditional owners. And, um, and it's such a big flow of lovely clean water every year goes through here from Twin Falls, Jim Jim Falls. And, um, and as I said, the, the main thing is the management, it's looked after and, and, and a lot of the fishing in here is catch and release. We encourage everyone to, uh, to take one fish if they want to, if, if, they, if they eat fish, and, but let the rest go. Uh, let them grow into big breeding females and, um, and lay millions of eggs and produce some more barra for us. Hey mate, what's a take home? If you want to come up here, come to Yellow Waters and catch a barra, What's one hot tip? Your yeah, timing is very important. If you can come up, up here during the, um, the runoff period, which is when the wet season ends and, and the water starts to, uh, to run off, um, that's your real hot spot time. You know, you, uh, these months we're in now, um, they're your hardest times. It's through winter, the, it all slows down a little bit. Yeah. But you still catch a fish, you've just got to work a bit harder. Mate, it wouldn't be fishing if it was easy. No, that's true. <laughs> Rob knows this billabong like the back of his hand. He had a few surefire spots, and the technique here is pretty particular. Mainly, we were casting at snags and up against the lilies, where they form a wall of weed underwater that the bearer hide and hunt in. The density of wildlife here is staggering. The ecosystem here is a steaming engine of diversity and constant movement. <laughs> yep, definitely a croc there. There's something about the wildness here that really draws me in. It's a little salty just sitting in the water, just off the bow of the boat, which is evidence of a couple of things. You don't want to go swimming here, but also there's fish around because these guys are hunting for the same thing that we are. One of the most popular questions I get asked when I'm traveling around the bush is about tires, particularly tread selection. Now, depends on what you're doing out there, where you're headed, and what kind of driving you're doing, but there literally is something for everyone. Now, everyone's familiar with highway tread. Now, they've got the least aggressive tread pattern on them, but what you get out of that is better fuel mileage, generally speaking, much quieter running noise, and they've actually got great tread on sand because you don't want tread, which digs in. You want to float on top of it. So the smoothest tire that you can run is actually the best for sand. At the other end of the scale, you've got mud terrains. Now these guys have a very aggressive pattern and they're designed for people that are really gonna be doing some hardcore four wheel driving where every little bit of traction makes a difference. Your mud driving, snow, generally anywhere where it's mission critical to have as much traction as possible. Right in the middle, you've got all terrain tires. Now they share the same increased sidewall strength, higher sidewalls, 
and they've got medium tread aggression. So they're really good for guys who are gonna be doing a little bit of four wheel driving and a lot of highway Ks. In my mind, that's probably most people. All terrains sort of suit your average traveler. You're gonna be doing a lot of miles on the highway to get to anywhere to begin with. The all terrains, you also get a nice mixture of low noise with enough traction to get you through most situations. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which tread you select, as long as you get a proper four-wheel drive off-road tire. These things are built to withstand the abuse that the Australian Outback hands out. They've got increased strength across the sidewall and the tread. They're designed to be aired down so that you can control how much tread you've got, how much footprint you've got on your tire, and they're gonna take that abuse even when you're fully loaded.